Right, should we start? Let's Everybody go. Ready? You got the okay. intro, and Mike's got to introduce the video. Yes, what? you have. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> three, two, one, action. This is Q&A in the USA. Or, <laughs> no, not in the USA, in the UK. <laughs> From the <Cut>. UK. <laughs> Welcome back to the Voice Gary. That's it, you've got to say it like that as well. Is that me? That's, I think, no, that's a cup of tea. Oh, actually. That's you. That's how it is, maybe. It is. This one's you, because I just set that one down. I think that might have sugar in, Dave. I think that might be Dell's. Have a, have a blast on that. No sugar. That's like your tea. Do you try? I have the diabetic tea. You can have five yeah. sugars in it. Yeah. <laughs> not diabetic, but. Probably got cold by now. <laughs> it is a bit cold by now. Anyway. Well, Mike's got to do this. Welcome, welcome back. back to Now Boys Garage. As you can see today, we have many idiots in the garage. So we thought, as we have some special guests from the USA, we would have QA USA. So, in reverse order, we have the very usual and the very normal Mr. Dyson. The very lovely Penny Bissop. The extremely lovely Melly Wrench. <laughs> and this bloke who I think is Mike Wrench. So welcome. Today we're going to answer some of your questions. We put them out to patrons because we wanted just a small amount. When we put them out worldwide we get a million amount, don't we? So we thought we could ask some questions for you. So here we are for some fun and games. Have we got them? These yeah. are our two compares for today. They're going to ask the questions and we idiots are going to try and answer some of them. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah. This is going to be a school. We have a cake. We have cakes first. They are English tea We're dining in the cake tea. already? Absolutely. Tea. Cake oh. comes before questions. Oh, you've got to keep your energy up. Yeah, energy levels. These are <laughs> high energy cakes. Uh, excuse me. Oh, you <laughs> Do we not get a cake? You're staff, though. <laughs> we get the staff. Stuff in the circle. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> Up there in the cheap seats. Thank you, <laughs> They'll keep them there now, either yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> right. Difficult right. to ask questions when you're okay. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Right. Melly's going to start. So here we are with question questions. one. So you can do the first one. All right. Jonathan Lambert, um, what is the best two up bike you have ever ridden or been a passenger on? I would like to know how Mike feels about filtering as an American. Sorry, I guess we should. Maybe do the first Do the part. Work. Okay. So that first two up bike you've ever ridden, that's yours. Uh, well, I've never been a passenger on a two up. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I haven't really ridden that many that we've both been on before. Um, I've had many Magnus, and the first bike I was ever, I ever rode was a uh, 86 VF750C Honda Magna. Uh, the Super Magna was pretty comfortable for you, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And the uh, bike we hired two years ago, the DL650 V-Strom, was actually, it was a really nice bike. It had a lot more power than I thought it would have with two people up on it, so. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty comfortable. But it's a cruiser bike. I can recommend it. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. So it's like a cruiser bike. Same for me, with the Harley in it. With the fat boy, you got that, the length of the chassis. Mm -hmm. Gives you space for each other. It's not wrong to have a backrest. You know, on something like a sports bike, it's all wrong to have a backrest. <laughs> it looks a bit odd. You do look a bit weird. So, yeah, I think any two, I like the fat one, we just call it a limo, don't we? But it's, it's true, isn't it? Anything that is physically big yeah. always has an, an, yeah. an advantage. Yeah, and for the, for the, or the passenger or the pillion, yeah. you know, having yeah. a backrest, it's one thing that gains a lot of confidence yeah. for when Mel so, was first riding with me. So he's agree. having something to lean back on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cruiser bikes, agree? Yep, yep. that's fine. Maybe? Cool, so cruiser bikes in the second part there. And the trick is, Melly, you've got to keep them in check, these lot. <laughs> the round one. Yeah. yeah, we're busy with the cakes. <laughs> and the uh, tape. And the tape. Like, <laughs> that's so he, he says, uh, I would like to know how Mike feels about filtering as an American, where it is illegal almost everywhere, as compared to the UK, where it is legal and even encouraged. 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 Enjoy. Enjoy. Um, well, I've never gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> in, it depends on what state you're in. And you know we've had that conversation before, yeah, where yeah. you know depending upon where you live in the U.S., I don't think there's anywhere where it's actually on the books as a law that says you can do it. Yeah. What it is is that there isn't a law prohibiting it. Yeah. Yes. So in California, they do it all the time. Yeah. In Michigan, on the other hand, where we live, it's not the case. It is definitely illegal. And while I've seen people do it, a lot of times you get individuals that want to take the law into their own hands and they're, they feel like you're getting away with it because they're stuck in traffic yeah, yeah. and you're yeah, filtering through. So they may you know, open the door or something yeah. on you. We've got that a lot. Everyone, whenever we do video filtering, people always say, 
if I did that in the US or in Canada, I'd get people open doors on me and shoot me out the window. <laughs> people are resentful, aren't they? The they are, yeah. make progress. They think you're, you're, you're getting away with something. You know? yeah, they're not as resentful in November when he's pissing down the rain. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah, you're out there <laughs> yeah, doing, doing your, um, your pit. What's it called? The polar bear ride? Yeah, yes. With yeah. MTA. Yeah, they're not, they're not so resentful then. No, yeah. but as far as how I feel about it, I would love to be able to do it. Yeah. Because when I was visiting friends in Canada, being stuck at the Blue Water bit, Bridge going That's through right. customs, Yeah. Can't filter there either. Yeah. I mean, it was 95 degrees out one day. I was ready to fall over from dehydration yeah, off the bike, too much, where I could have just rode, yeah. rode through it. So, cool. Well, right, sorry, that one's awesome. Okay, covers that one. Oh, okay, uh, Alex Falls, uh, given American citizens' right to bear arms. Don't mean the wearing of sleeveless shirts. Because <laughs> <laughs> giving guns to bears. Yeah, no arming bears. No, no arming bears. bears. Yeah, <laughs> that would be so dangerous. <laughs> says, do you feel more vulnerable riding a motorcycle on American roads than you do over here in the UK? Vulnerable? Well, I mean, I don't feel vulnerable for firearms use. No. I mean, you know, that's actually kind of two different questions. Mm -hmm. It is. What is it's a question about riding or a question about firearms ownership. Yeah. But honestly, you know, I think there's that outside opinion of America that because, you know, we have the Second Amendment, which I plead the fifth on, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. On the second, I'll take the fifth. Next. <laughs> yeah. The um. I like that. That's a good point. A lot of it is just it's it's really blown out of proportion. I mean, there are more firearms owners now than there has been, you know, ever in right. our country's history, and yet most in most cases the rates of violent crime mm -hmm. has gone down to some degree. Yeah. I'm more afraid of other drivers on the road than I would ever be from someone. Mm. Absolutely, you're more. In, yeah, you're more. I've never had anybody pull a gun on me, and I've been riding since I was 18 years old. I'm yeah. 44 now, so. But you have plenty of people. But pull I've had people, yeah, pull out on me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was so obvious, wasn't it? The, the other thing as well is, don't get it wrong. We do have the right to bear arms in Great Britain as well. You can get a shotgun certificate yeah. that easy. Um, they have to tell you why you can't have one. Not a firearm certificate, that's different. Something you, different. You have to convince them why you need it. But a shotgun certificate, you can have one of those just on request. You can buy a shotgun and you may transport it from A to B in your car. There's no problem. So you can drive up the road with a shotgun in your car perfectly legally. It doesn't mean you're going to poke it out the window at people. Yeah. This is the issue is that people who are going to pull a gun on another person, they're either somebody who fears for their life or they're a criminal. And I think criminals don't generally have a license today for anything. No. They just do what they want. They're, they're not, not going to get the gun legal legally anyhow. They're not so. going to do Yeah, absolutely. And they'll probably nick your bike for me, right? And so. your gun. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I like that. Okay. Um, Dave. Uh, sure. not, 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 not directly. Oh, oh, I was just saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just worked as a question. Oh, no. Get all nervous. Uh, do you have a Premier League football team? Uh, Feel like alienating X percent of your viewers? <laughs> I don't know. Football. Football. That's a sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of just football is that? <laughs> is that the one with the round ball or the odd shape? Oh. The oh, oblong or the, the round oblong ball. or the oval? Soccer. 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 Yeah. Soccer. I don't know. I don't know anything about football. I don't know the. Was it the offside rule? The onside rule? I quite fancy the idea of the old motor ball. You know, yeah. the bikes and. That's rollerball. Yeah. <laughs> Hands up who remembers rollerball. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can say no matter what country you're in, always root for the home team wherever you're at. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Less <laughs> kicking is afterwards on the way home. Okay. That's the best way. All right. Uh, Doug Addis. Uh, I was wondering if you would consider a two-smoke bike for a project build. Two-smoke. Two-smoke. <laughs> two <smoke laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, I like the idea of a RD 350LC cafe racer or similar. Yeah. Oh, they always a cafe. Well, yeah, oh, they yeah, anyway. Yeah, I mean, a cafe racer basically is something fast and you make it lightweight. I mean, the 350LC is lightweight already. And fast. And fast. For what so, it is. yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to do a project on a 350 it would, be, it would be something cosmetic, I think. Yeah, I think the problem with them is a bit like the fizzies, isn't it? The, the Yamaha mm. and S1Es. They've been bought up now in all their wrecked forms yeah. by all the midlifers yeah. who are restoring them meticulously yeah. nut and bolt and charging yeah. six grand for yes. them. Yes. So when, I, when you first passed your test, look, we bought you a 350LC for 300 quid. Yeah. It was a proper shed. Yeah. And we got it fixed up for next to nothing and we just rode it around, didn't we? And sold it for about 500. Now you pay five grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think in all, the states, any CB is outrageously overpriced, yeah. and a lot of people will buy them up, and they'll just go down, you know, the catalog yeah. and order up all the bits yeah. and yeah. make it look like a cafe racer, and they didn't fix yeah. anything. 
Yeah. You know, if the forks are still leaking, yeah, it doesn't yeah, run yeah. right. They well, put five filters on it, and it doesn't yeah. idle correctly anymore. You know, that's right. Yeah. So, so I don't think I'll do anything. Question: The, the, the answer to the question, I wouldn't, because I want to build stuff that's different and unique. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. build stuff that everyone else expects to see built because it's done to death by people who. Well, you know what the the modern cafe racer is is a secondhand sport bike from the mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because with you're right, a decent set of tires. Yeah. And you know modern braking materials and changing out the lines and just yeah. doing basic maintenance, you'll make the bike perform better than it ever did when it was new. Yeah, totally. Right. And you didn't spend a lot on it, so uh, yeah. you can modify it. And that is like that is the point, isn't it? The yeah. whole point of a calf racer is to take something and Super make it perform better, yeah. make it lighter, exactly. quicker. And you can always combine styles. I mean, it's you, you know the sky's the limit, right? Well, that's yeah. what a street fighter, yeah. isn't it? Well, that, yeah. Effectively, a street fighter is a calf racer. It's, it? the, it's, it's the later sort of nineties incarnation yeah. of calf yeah, racer. Uh, if you want to make a, a hooligan bike out of it, you just change the rear sprocket, right, and burn tires to the ground. Just go and burn tires down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. All right, Paul El Elverstone. Oh, Elf. Elf. Yeah, Elf. Oh, yeah. Uh, quite simply, who does the best rock music? England or the States? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of rock music. Whoa, that's a subjective. Rock music. Well, what have we got? Who have we got? Well, as a, as a lad, and probably still to this day, I was a massive Motorhead fan. Definitely. Um, Lemmy. Yeah. We claim Lemmy. Yeah, I, mean, Lemmy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we had Lemmy. Had Lemmy. Had Lemmy, yeah. So, Finest British so, headbanger. And there's, so, there's loads of other. I mean, but there always, is no end. Of bands. It depends yeah. if you consider bands like Queen and stuff like that as part of the rock music thing. Well, um, when, when I was a kid, I listened to Motorhead and I listened to Iron Maiden. You know, I think all the yeah. hoods in school listened to Maiden. Yeah, yeah definitely. Know. It's yeah. right around where uh, I think somewhere in time came out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the but uh, you can't have one without the other. No. We were talking about that earlier. I mean, yeah. you know. James Marshall Hendrix mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. couldn't get a gig except for, you know, uh, uh, playing for Little Richard. Yeah. And then he comes to the UK and he makes it huge. Yeah. An American in the UK playing yeah. British amplifiers with an American guitar becomes yeah. famous and then go back, goes back yeah. to the States. That was left-handed, strong left -handed. Yeah. <laughs> and That's I mean, a lot of the really great amps are made in Britain. And a lot of the great guitars are made in America. Yeah, they they argue, they don't they? They argue that. And then ACDC throws it all out the window because they're Australian, Australian guys. Well, half of them are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them's a northerner, isn't it? One of them's in prison. <laughs> Steady. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, Bill Watts Garrett does not support any of these statements. <laughs> I guess it could get itself so soon, yeah. <laughs> the thing, the point is, I don't think it, it, the, the two countries can split. I think they're inextricably linked. When you look at also, most rock music is said to have come from blues. Yes, which, which is which is nothing is a, to do with Britain at all. Nothing at all. And, you know, blues music. Did you say something about blues music? Oh, yeah, someone asked a question. Someone called Joe said, what's your favourite music styles? Cool, definitely. Well, blues is definitely in there for blues, me. Blues for me, Blues, yeah. rock, metal, oh, blues, I like yeah. some country. That country, country. Love, country, love country. Yeah. I also like rap country as well, like Georgia Boys. <laughs> and that's silly. I love it. It's just, uh, it's just madness. There's a YouTube video. I don't remember who who did it, but there's a bunch of well, I don't know if they're really country boys or they're pretending to be. They where they're playing ACDC's Thunderstruck on banjos. Yes, I've seen that. It is fantastic. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, of course, you know banjos, what, isn't it? Yeah. You know what you get when you play a country record backwards? No, go ahead. You get your wife back and your dog back. And your <laughs> <laughs> when your house is reissued to you. <laughs> well, your trailer, right? <laughs> yeah. If your dog, your dog doesn't bite you. <laughs> oh dear, moving right along. Okay. Oh, man, what did you bring her for? <laughs> I don't know, she was following me. Oh dear. I tagged along. Uh, John Malley. Uh, we talk about bikers being a brotherhood if we set aside one percenters. The existence of this brotherhood within mainstream biking is a contentious issue on many forums, but I do feel that in the UK, bikers generally feel and demonstrate a kinship and also acknowledge each other on the road. Yeah. There's also the to nod or not to nod debate. Back in the 70s, it was generally a big wave, not a nod. Bikes must have become less That's stable. That's surfing. <laughs> Differences here, between here and the States? Yeah, I think so. I think. The brotherhood thing, because it's the word given to it all by the outlaw brigade yeah. and the one percenters, then people don't want to be a tarnished without. People people often say the brotherhood is a myth because they don't want to be part of the whole outlaw club thing and they want to shun that. 
but there's still a sense of family. It's just a difference in name. I yeah. certainly believe that, don't you? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there, there are certain elements for who they're very much on the outside looking yeah. in, and perhaps they don't feel part yeah. of it. Yeah. But yeah. well, what are we all having in Well, yeah. yeah. Well, what are you all watching for? Yeah. Yeah. Because they've done us that. They don't turn off. That's the point. They're looking for recommendations it's... of Kate. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, like, well, you guys do the nod. We we. We do the wave because you know you're on the other side. It's on the other side, right? So you can do it safely without pulling your hand off the throttle. Well, you know why that is, though, don't you? Because the the, ma the makers of motorcycles went and put the throttle in your sword hand. Yes. See, that's the yeah. problem. <laughs> originally, we drive on the left because the but you're left-handed. I am, but my throttle's on the right. That's the, actually, I'll be right. Yeah, yeah, but you can still hold the sword. You can still yeah. hold the sword, and then you'd have to go on the wrong side of the road yeah. to stab them with it. But that's the point. The Romans drove on the left, and they say your yes. right arm was free to yeah. fight the enemy. Yeah. But I don't know and why. And then the French messed it all up. Well, the, what I was going to say <laughs> is that, up. Yeah, well, yeah, how many times do you hear that? The French Whether it's the up. wave or the nod or like, you know, yeah. some other clever hand sign that you might get. <laughs> well, see, when, it's one, when it's one biker to another, it's for me, it's a sign of mutual respect because yeah, we know yeah. we, we ride because we love it. But yeah. we know that there's always an inherent risk. Anyone who tells yeah. you that, oh, yeah. as long as you put enough safety gear and chartreuse on all over the place, yeah. no one will ever hit you and you'll never get hurt. That's yeah. not true. Everyone always takes What's the risk. What's the famous phrase? Certificates make rubbish body armor. Yes. It doesn't yeah. matter how good you are at riding. We're out there in the elements, in all year round, most of us, and taking all the same risks. Yeah. So yeah, there's a sense yeah, of camera. Yeah, yeah, there is, there's exactly that. You yeah. recognize that. Shit. Yeah, it's, a, it's a mutual respect. respect. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've always... I've always had help when I needed it. I've always stopped and helped people when I see them broke down on the bike. And I mean, you know, there's, what you don't see that with a car. No, They'll drive no, right past you. No. On the hood up, you got a problem? No. Oh, tough. Well, what <laughs> got an Lexus. I'm gonna pull over and help him out. Yeah. What, what do the girls what think? Do what do you think? I, I nod at people, but if I see a policeman, I'll give him a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, yeah. Hello! It freaks him right out. <laughs> I actually started doing that. Well, I'm still new to riding, so I've still got the yeah, death grip. grip. <laughs> <laughs> White knuckles. You might get like two fingers out of me. Yeah, That's about it. yeah she does that too, but it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> right. right. Okay, right along. You got the okay. ball moving along. All right, uh, David Stockford, uh, what do you think about Sons of Anarchy? Whoa. Sons mm. of Anarchy. Oh, yeah. I'm serious, real quick. <laughs> I can answer that. It's a, a, a quick answer and I'll step out of it so you can play. Uh, series 1 to Series 3, brilliant. From then onwards, it went stupid and I stopped watching it. I watched kind of clip it of 7 to see where it went, turned into a Greek tragedy for me. Uh, not into it. It's just fantasy. I'm, it's like I'm, a spaghetti western. I'm exactly the same. The first series particularly, really enjoyed it. Good piece of entertainment. By the time it got to Series 3, I, I bailed out. I don't know. Yeah. I, I watched it all the way through and... I mean, yeah, I agree. The, the beginning series were, were, were great. I liked them. Yeah. And then it can tell that the writers were getting bored. Yeah. And I've never met a more stupid group of individuals in my entire <laughs> life. You're screaming at the T, why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah. You know they're going to get in trouble. And, yeah. and you can see it coming a mile away. This, yeah. the dot, it's like, and you think to yourself, people can't be this stupid. Well, you also look at it, the fact, if you ever watch movies like Snatch and Lockstock, yeah. they're, they're running around East London shooting each other, blowing each other's buildings up, and you never see a police car, yeah. ever. No. You never see the police squad, and it's the same in that. You actually find the police are as corrupt as them, yeah. and yet there's DEA, there's FBI all over them, and yet whenever they go and murder four people and bury in the woods. Yeah, nothing no happens. There's no problem. We just carry on with that. Bury them out in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. Did one of them <laughs> sell a tanker full of petrol yeah. to the local police to shut them up? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Really? Honestly, yeah. it, that's the problem. It became for me a spaghetti western in the end. It was just yeah. fantasy. And, it wasn't, and, yeah. And you want to alert everyone dies in the end. Yeah, exactly. It? And there's no pro. I mean, as far as the way it was written, there's no, no one to root for. I mean, at the, in the mm. beginning of the series, you're rooting for Jax, right? Yes. Yeah. And you have characters that you care about that you buy into this course has nothing to do with motorcycling at this point nothing. this is just nothing. writing a good story that someone wants to watch yeah after this third season you hate everybody they're all dirtbags you yeah, want to see yeah. them all gone or gone to jail and then at, towards the end of the show you're like i'm glad you ran into the semi-truck good yeah. for you <laughs> yeah. poor this driver the show is over yeah. 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 yeah in fact poor indian <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> wrecked that fantastic indian for no reason at all anyway there we are that's what we think what do you think did you watch uh, it? Too violent, and it doesn't really reflect 
No. Um, cashed out. No. Yeah, no. I've never seen them having cake at their meetings as well. No, no. In no. their meetings, in their old clubhouse, there was never cake. No, well, that's so they're the not real bikers, are they? Yeah. No. Real bikers eat cake and drink tea, so I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were sort of shivering because it was cold, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Well, they are in California. Oh, yeah, I've forgotten about that. A cold day for them is when it's not 65 outside. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, uh, Huff and Puff. I'd like to modify the seat on my bike. Do you foresee ever doing a simple skills episode on upholstery? Did one. Yeah. Did in one. fact, that's how I found your channel. Cool. I have, uh, I had. What made you hang around? Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> There's nothing better on a show. Oh, stick the with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I uh, had a fairly rare 88 Honda Super Magna. They didn't build a lot of them worldwide, let alone in the US. And good luck finding a seat pan, let alone one that isn't ripped and, and dry rotted and cracked. But there's a couple, actually I think the guy who made the seat cover is from England. And I ordered it on eBay and I called around to a bunch of places to find out what it was gonna cost to get it reupholstered. And then US dollars is gonna be well over 200 bucks. So I just, just looking through YouTube or Google to find anything I'm like, it can't be that hard. Now I found his video, so it's out there. You know there is a search for it function you on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Drop me a line, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. But if you look in the garage section and the playlist is there, how to recover a seat. Right. Cool, okay. Uh, Patrick O'Hagan, uh, I would like to see a store section where we could purchase Del Boy stuff. Cool, now, uh, Carlos, my buddy from the transitions, uh, he does, he keeps telling me about this, there's a, a system you can set up where you give your design to a company and they print your stuff and they'll send it out for you. So we're going to deal with that at some point. We'll probably deal with some t-shirts and hoodies and maybe some caps and stuff and you'll just be able to buy them online. But we haven't got the time to get involved in the logistics of that anymore, have we been? No, it's I was going to try and have a look at doing something over Christmas time yeah. when I've yeah. got a few days off. So certainly for the new year that is definitely coming, it'll be like a, a swag channel. <laughs> You can go on there and just order your swag, there'll be badges and so on, patches, all sorts of stuff. And uh, possibly even other stuff, I don't know yet, yeah. see what yeah. Cool, and what we might do is tie it up with some wrench guitar work stuff as well. <laughs> my beautiful hat, look at my beautiful hat. Like Sammy 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 Thank you, Melly, we've got a few more questions. All right. Um, yes, thank you, Melly. We'll, we'll be back again in a minute. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> uh, Glenn. What to clean his greasy wheel rims with? He's got chain wax and road gunk all over. His hand. <laughs> <laughs> Using your head doesn't work very well. <laughs> well I don't know, that's why I have this. You can yeah. use your foot, but your boots get terribly messy. <laughs> sorry, sorry mate, sorry. Um, I find personally, uh, uh, take a whole kitchen roll, an entire kitchen roll, get a big pad of it, soak it with WD-40 and just wipe it off. It really just wipes it, it releases it, it dilutes all the chain wax. Chain wax is the worst, isn't it? Oh, it's horrible. It's make a sticky, so just, like loads of WD-40 on it, or on a cloth, not on the wheel because it sprays onto your disc. Yeah, kind of splatters. Keep it off your discs and off your tire. Spray onto a cloth, well the cloth will get instantly black, so just yeah. paper, and get a big bin sack, and just like wipe in the sack, you know, and you'll need, you'll do two or three, and you'll get it all off. And when you've done that, just buff it. What do you use? I use, uh, I, I use a lot of Simple Green, and I dilute it down. Is that a narcotic? Nice. Simple green. <laughs> simple green. Well, yeah. people yeah. in the US are going to back. Get the lighter. Just have to set fire to it. <laughs> No, it's, it, um, I mean, it's a cleaning agent, right? right. And, it, and uh, I mean, in the U.S., everybody knows what Simple Green is because the chemical itself is biodegradable. You don't want to right. drink it or anything, but, yeah. like, yeah. you know, it's funny. Oh, this is green, that's environmentally right. responsible cleaning agent until you clean something that's all greasy and stuff, <laughs> yeah. and that goes down in yeah. the water. And exactly, yeah, with all the water. noxious poisons and stuff. But it does a good job. Like, I use the, the Bell Ray Super... Uh, chain loop because it's it's kind of like a chain wax yeah and it, it will clean as you as you put it on the chain but yeah sometimes it does fling off I don't I haven't seen anything that doesn't fling off mm -hmm. the WD or WD 40 will always leave that little bit of oily residue on it, it does, yeah. but the simple green will take it right off also the you guys in the UK have those uh, Mr. Clean's one of the brands but there are other brands available other there. brands are yeah. available <laughs> There was it's a, not promote any given brand of It's cleaning. like this white uh, sponge right. kind of material, like a micro cleanser. Boy, those, that works great on aluminum. I mean, aluminium, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to confuse well, you guys. Yeah, all, yeah. Five, all five syllables will be pronounced. I, I don't want to confuse you guys here in a garage, right? <laughs> garage! <laughs> hey. You work for three days to get to say garage properly. It's garage. <laughs> 
but those those Mr. Clean sponges, yeah, it bare aluminum. It'll take the oxidation and the yeah. oil right off of it in one pass. I've seen those. I think for white wall tires on Harley's, like yes. a white sponge yeah. that's impregnated. Yeah. So it's, you get them up. You got to watch it because if you use it on something glossy, it will dull it down because there is an abrasive in there. Yeah, yeah. but it's Which not like using the Scotch Bright. When you, you get uh, like the rims on the sports bike here, they got like a gloss, high gloss finish. Yeah. That that's where the W four works for me. Yeah. And oddly enough, when it's dry brake dust and not uh, sticky stuff like in the summer, you can use uh, Mr. Sheen, you know, like yeah. furniture polish on the cloth again and wipe it around the wheel. You know what? I found it works really well. It's just like one of those cheap car dusters. Yeah. You get the cool. cheapest one you want. And after you're done riding, just dust the wheels off because it literally is just dust. It's just that's dust. where most of the dirt you're going to have on your rag when you're cleaning it off. Yeah, a WD forty yeah. comes yeah. from. If you dust it first and then yeah, clean, yeah. you have less work. Yeah. Well, you use WD forty. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. stuff on it. It's just amazing that you can use everywhere on the planet. Yeah. It is. That's what else works. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I think there's an alternative. GT eighty five. That smells nice. It's the same. It, it works yeah. exactly the yeah, same way for that purpose. Yeah. GT eighty five. The red and black can. It smells really nice. That it's yeah. nicer stuff. And cool. it's cheaper. It is a lot cheaper. Yeah. Cool. cool. So and we're cool. cheap. So we need. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. Alright, <laughs> uh, Metal Mickey, Michael Osborne. Oh, right. um, he's been watching the channel for over four years and see where it's come. Uh, where do you think the channel will be in four years' time? And he also hopes it's not a monster that's overtaking <laughs> our lives. It's one of them bears with arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has a bit, but we don't time. care, do we? Four years, yeah, I see what well, double the time. Well, hopefully, if, this, if the growth rate continues, in, well inside that time, we'd like to go to a unit, a proper. Uh, I mean, this is just a 10 foot wide space here. If we could double the width of that or treble it and get a big 40 by 40 square. I mean, in, in America, get household domestic garages are just massive compared to this, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you guys are always joking about our garage, but like, you know, by by our standards in the US, it's tiny. But yeah, then again, the country has a lot more space to begin with. Yeah, these. exactly, yeah. I think so the other you side. You don't have as many building restrictions to keep things so small. That's right. I think for the channel, we would say more space, a bigger a bigger space to work from, and maybe more, more sort of interaction. Mm. So that's what we want to be doing is with the patron side of things that, that we would like to get those people more involved and in relation to come over to the garage to visit, to see what we're doing here and to just be more involved, more interactive and do more stuff. Have a grill out there with sausages yeah. on oh, it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Get well, the grill. Barbecues non-stop. Barbecues. I've done with the sausages yet, Del. Yes. <laughs> five more minutes. No, we'll have a little left. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Yes. <laughs> You said that half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a job waiting for him if he wanted to come yeah, over. Yeah, definitely. He can do the sausages. And he can make the tea. <laughs> I don't like the sausages and the cheese, right? <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes Turkish. <laughs> right, next question. Alan Ingham. Alan. Uh, he wants to know how to polish his tarnished bandit pipes. You know, they go sort of yellowy, bronzy colour. Brown. Yeah. brown. Yeah. Um, and he's used Autosol, but it doesn't work. Do they? I mean, Suzuki's are renowned for this, aren't they? For the, the, even though they have stainless down pipes, they get a bit. Um, well, it's more than a tarnish, isn't it? It, it is a discoloration. It's a proper. Br yeah, it's and a, you've it, got to get on it with something abrasive. Um, it's not often rough, is it? I don't. No, no, no. It's no, quite no, smooth no. to the touch, but it's no. just gone bronzy. I mean, I mean, back in the day, back in the day, I mean, Bonnie's were a classic for it. You used yeah. to get a really beautiful straw colour, and then yeah. they used to go blue, and then which purple. is. Which is something different again. Yeah, because you're a bit lean. And then you had to push it over. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but the horn exhaust pipe. But no, but the the Suzuki stuff, you can clean them up, but it does need to be something abrasive. It needs to be something like Scotch Bright with Auto Sol on it or something of that nature. I go with that actually. Yeah, wire wool, wool, but that's well, auto, -sol is, auto Sol is a good polish, but it's a very fine polish. Like any yes. polish has yeah. an abrasive in it, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, in the States, what I've used in the past, and like, like you said, the Scotch Bright, is I've also used Flitz, which is like Auto Saw. It's kind of a paste, comes like in a mm. toothpaste tube, yeah. but it's got more of an abrasive to yeah. it, right? And it will cut through it eventually, but it's, it's like when I was in the military having to polish brass with brass yeah. out. It'll look perfect, but yeah. you spend all day at one little yeah, spot yeah. just polishing it, and really, it's your exhaust. I mean, you want to spend that much time on it? You, you could just buy a whole system. Yeah, right? You are <laughs> going to be spending a lot of time on it and a lot of elbow grease. But yeah. I would say, that if, if the question, or if, if, if the answer to the question is abrasive, go more abrasive because all the not abrasive enough yeah, to get at it. No. If you if you took the exhaust off and you lean it on a big polishing wheel, yeah. it'll definitely come up. Yeah. 
But what's happening there is more abrasive. Yeah. And as simple as that, the soap and the wheel acts as the yeah, abrasive. Yeah. What I've done in the past with many sets of pipes that are in a bad way is look at how much worse can you make it, is get some thousand grit wet and dry mm. and use it wet with just water and then to rub it down along the pipe. So you rub along yeah. the length of the pipe, you will get a scratch on there, you'll get the, the scuffed finish. Then change 1200 paper, which is finer, and put soapy water involved, which makes it finer still. Then you can go to your autosol. So you'll take the bronzy colour you see. I tell you what, the bandits get it on the collector. Yeah. That little heat shield yeah. around the collector, it gets really dark brown. Just get that abrasive in, with, put the scratches along the pipe, so and actually make that satin finish a feature. And once you've got the satin finish, it's so much faster. If you get a bit of discoloration when you're cleaning the bike, grab a scotch pad, a green scotch pad, and just up and down the pipe, take all the crap off and put the nice satin I mean, finish. It's always going to be easier to maintain that standard yeah, rather, than a satin finish. rather than get back to it in the first yeah, place. I mean, yeah. and it has to, I mean, not all bikes will turn that brown colour either. I mean, no. they're stainless pipes, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's got to be a chemical reaction between the heat and yeah, the air. Yeah. It's it's when you look at cutlery, cutlery doesn't discolour because it's the no. highest grade stainless, yeah. isn't it? But yeah. motorcycle pipes, they might be stainless, but it's right down there. Well, I'll be honest, there. I mean, my SV1000, the down pipes on that are stainless and they are brown, and I just leave them. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, well, the, um, yeah. Yeah. My, my Triumph Speed 4 that I have, the pipes were, were the same way. They were yeah. really browned and. Some of that was because the guy was running an aftermarket exhaust without fueling, so yeah. it was running so hot. Yeah. Uh, but the um, I did I I just a lot of patience in auto yeah. and, and eventually I got them looking brand new. And then an hour and a half later, they yeah. looked almost yeah. exactly like they did. Yeah. Before the point. I did but, but I think that's but, the but, question. But, then, again, yeah. there is no quick fix. Is yeah. There? No. But whatever well, there you do, is. It's, it's going to take, take you time. You've got to invest a little bit. Well, of time. if you want a permanent fix, and I mean, if I know in the states there's a company called Jet Jet Hot. And they have like a plasmaized metal coating that they'll spray on it, not a mm. ceramic, uh, like a powder coat. It's not mm. that. They have a special gun yeah. that will turn the little fine powdered metal into a plasma, and they can spray it down mm. and give it either a black but or a chromed finish, yeah. and it will never tarnish. Mm. But, but that's so expensive. There's, there's two answers yeah. then to your question. You could either you can spray them with a heatproof ceramic engine lacquer, can't you? If you want a nice shiny silver pipe, but that'll always be satin. Or you just go for a satin finish. Just scuff yeah. them up, get yeah. all that corrosion off by scuffing it up with abrasive paper. And once it's done, get it as fine as you can. Mm. And you get a nice satin sheen to it and just redo it. Every time you wash your bike, just scuff yeah. it off again. Yeah. I mean, that once, works for me. Once you've got it to that standard, yeah, I mean, mm. keep it like that. It'll be relatively yeah. easy to keep What it takes like. you 20 minutes with Autosol to yeah. get a little bit clean will be five strokes with, a, with an abrasive yeah. paper and it'll be back. But it'll be matte and that's what you need to... Just keep it up with a scotch bright if you like a satin finish. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah just do it every now and again. Right. I think we're on the I think that was a comprehensive. Yeah. Oh, that's a good comprehensive. comprehensive. Yes, yeah. of course. I, I, I locked up with my brother, mate. <laughs> I was looking out of the corner of my eye and I thought we were on the verge of getting throttled there for a minute. So you got to watch We wrapped that out just Yeah, yeah. Up just good. she's the one to watch. Next one. Dave Lightfoot, uh, what are the best and worst rules or laws UK biking versus USA biking? All of them. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> yeah, period. Yeah. Um, for, for me, it's the it's the... I reckon it's, it's the, the fact that they do purges. We have laws are plenty here, don't we? Oh, yes. And 99% of the time you'll ride around and they will be uh, unimplemented. Mm -hmm. You can ride past a police car with a number plate that big and nobody cares. You can ride along in front of a traffic car with all manner of different things, a loud exhaust, a black visor, you know. With your number plate with covered your number up. plate yeah. covered up, yeah. You know, all manner of things. Well, not, I'm not so sure. That, that was a mistake. But I think that's the point. You don't get any problems at all, and then suddenly they'll do a purge. Yeah. And the police pull you in, they all run you into a great big lay-by, and there's the DBSA officers, and they sit you and they tear your bike apart, issue you a prohibition, and send you home on the bus. You know, I think that sort of attitude is disgusting. Apply, apply the laws all of the time, in, in a mild-mannered way, you know, in a fair way. Don't just have these purges where people have got no choice. Start shooting fish in a barrel, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of the idea of education over legislation every time. I mean, yeah. for the kind it's of things sure. akin to... Yeah, yeah, I'll probably do. I read, <laughs> I read that somewhere. For the kind of stuff that is akin to biking, yeah, yeah, as I say, education. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the States, every state has a slightly different motor vehicle mm. law. I mean, there's a general set of rules that are common across the whole so country. federal rules. Yeah, those are federal. I mean, there are some federal highway laws, but like most of them are governed by the states, and usually that falls into the the realm of motorcycles. the The laws are highly dependent upon what state you live in, but in general, they're not that restrictive. They aren't. I mean, 
we do enjoy quite a bit of freedom when it comes to motorcycles. Like I was yeah. telling you before, all you need is a headlight and a tail light. That's it. it. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. You don't even need a stoplight. It just has to be there to show the back of the bike. Dang. And you can use hand signals in Michigan. When do we go? And it's perfectly legal. Can we go into that? And <laughs> even down to things like open exhaust. Yeah. It's the community at that point. There's no state law against mm -hmm. in our state about how loud the exhaust can be. Yeah. But I can go like I was telling you, I pulled the baffle out of the the, the speed four. Yeah. I was driving around my town. It was perfectly fine. I got to the as you guys call it the posh neighborhood, and I immediately got pulled over because I had. The, it's a good thing I had the baffle under the seat too because I put it right back in. <laughs> it saved me getting a ticket. Oh, when was the last time you got pulled? But it wasn't a it wasn't a law against the motorcycle. It was just a general noise ordinance, and it was loud enough I got the cops' attention when I rode yeah. past. You know, mm -hmm. I don't remember. The last time I got pulled. The last time no, I got pulled. That's actually. Why isn't that a question? Yeah. What was the last time? Um, when got was was the last time we got pulled was then. That was yeah. like a couple yeah. years ago. Wasn't it? Actually, I, I got pulled over after I got the scout. Right. Because the officer just it was an actual Detroit police officer. I wanted to look at the scout. Yeah, I wanted to look at the bike, so he pulled me over. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so I've had that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, in my in my younger days, I used to ride a lot of old classic British stuff, yeah. and you were forever getting pulled over yeah. then for all because they wanted to look at it. Yeah. But as far as actually pulled over for the purposes of a word in my ear, I you know I can't remember. No, I think the last time I can remember, do you remember we were at the roundabout over at Old Heath? Oh yes. We went we there's a off. there's a roundabout <laughs> whole here, and and it's uh it's it's kind of at the end of an industrial state, so you've got all this this long road. And the trucks obviously come in one way, but they have to go out the other way. So for the trucks to turn round, they put a roundabout in, but with one road on, one road off. Yeah. So it's a lollipop. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like a big circle. And of course, naturally, all the bikes go up there, and they go around left-handed. So you can get your left-hand tire over, and you can <laughs> yeah. have loads of fun. Yeah. And at this point, we all got a bit carried away. Jerry was with us, wasn't he? And we were going around left-handed, and he's going around right-handed. So we're crossing <laughs> shoulder to shoulder as we go around. It was like the red arrows. It was. It was amazing. <laughs> And then more and more people went on, and it was like fucking like a carousel. And, it, and then suddenly, because no, everyone was really relaxing into it, this fucking police car turns up. Woo! It just stops. That, oh shit! That sounds a lot like the wheelie spot from uh, um, uh, what's his name in Canada? Lee Stewart. Yeah, Lee Stewart. Yeah, that's the thing. They just turned up. Well, he was great, wasn't he? The guy was really cool. He just went. He just really. We were all of us probably what twice his age, weren't we? He was only about twelve, you know, average policeman. <laughs> and he said, it is, it, it, is, "It is best. I'm a teacher, and you're going to listen to me." Chill attitude. He said, this is not a playground. I expect you to be gone in a few minutes. But everybody, twice his age, went, yes sir, no problem sir. <laughs> 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 yeah, looking at your shoes. <laughs> yes, looking at your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what was, was funny? What was even funnier? Couple she was months, filming it. No, I was filming <laughs> it. She was filming it. She's looking at the camera away. She's stuck in her pocket. <laughs> a couple of months ago, we had to contact the police about a police issue. Right. And they were like, yeah, we can't do it. And I'm like, yeah, it's I know you. <laughs> <laughs> and this must have been for ten years. For the wrong reason. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it was like eight years later. Oh, oh he said, God. "I remember that day on that roundabout." <laughs> Policeman's yeah. was it? Policeman's memory. Is what he said. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. he got a chance to enrich his life. <laughs> yeah, he did. He made him feel better that night. Oh, oh right. Well, that wasn't even a question. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Next question. What we got? Uh, Tim Lindgren. Um, Tim, hi, Tim. How have your motorcycle taste changed over the years? Motorcycle taste change. Mine haven't changed at all. No. Yeah. Mine either. No, no I, I'm, I'm still fundamentally, I appreciate the same type of bike I did 30 odd years ago. Yeah. I must admit, I like the way that now, for, for the general masses, that I mean, it's got to be careful not to be arrogant on this, but for the general masses who choose not to fix their bikes, who choose not yeah, to, yeah. to enhance them, who choose not to improve them, mm. they, you've got bikes that don't need improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah. A bloke I used to work with, a colleague, and actually in the company we just, uh, just left, he bought an MT-09. He knew nothing whatsoever about bikes at all. He was happy to take it to the dealer to do everything, and he just rode it. Yeah. And and it's that facility, which is quite liberating for well, someone who doesn't have the ability or the yeah. or the want. No, to, but it, it do. does so much for biking because it means people who haven't got the ability. Because mm -hmm. once upon a time, you know, like you know, Dad's day, yeah. if you didn't know how to fix a bike, you didn't own one. Yeah, you had to know how to adjust yeah. a carburetor. It wouldn't start the next right. day. Yeah. Exactly right, and even to yeah. operate the bike, you yeah. to start it. You know, a kickstart an old Triumph back in the mm -hmm. day. You know, so yeah. I think. What I love about bikes now is that they're universal for everybody. And yeah. I must admit now, switch over to, to over to you on this. I mean, what's it like a modern bike today? It must be so much easier to ride when you look at what they used to be like. You know, you imagine kickstarting an old shovel in or something. <laughs> I don't think I could actually. Mel, Mel would go to kick it and it would throw it right down. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, 
I do like the electric start like yeah. the start button. Yeah. Um, I've had older bikes, old heavy bikes, and they're not much fun, are they? Really? No. no. Romantic no. idea, but not yeah. much fun. Yeah, I think the super efficiency of bikes. I think, yeah. but from a styling point of view, for me, the, yeah, yeah. Say the, act, the kind of stuff that draws me in yeah. is the same as it. You know, this kind of stuff that drew me in yeah. all those years ago. I think that you have to have more than one bike, don't you now? Oh, it's, it should be the law. It should yeah. be the law. Well, for me, I love riding on a fat boy. I love yeah. just going for a cruise on the fat yeah. boy. But I cannot wait to go and rack the pants off that thing when yeah. it's finished. You know, just a fast street fighter. Because I think both of those pastimes are part of biking. Yeah. So for me, I love going fast. I'd love to do a track day again. I've had the time for years. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I think it hasn't changed. It's probably no, just got a bit wider. That kind of brings you back into sort of why you're into biking in the first place. Yeah. I mean, it's not just a mode of transport. It's not. It? It's... It means far broader than that. Mine, my, my actually, because of how many Magnas I've owned, uh, I like... A magnitude. Yeah, yeah magnitude yeah, is not that. So, so, <laughs> I'll, I'll just go ice cream in my head now. No. <laughs> but the... Uh, I like I, I like riding broken. cruisers, but I like having the more powerful, like what you would yeah. call a muscle uh, cruiser, yeah. right? My cup's broken. And, uh, <laughs> <it's about> right. <laughs> but I still have one sport bike. I have the Speed yeah. Fork. Yeah, you do. And that was, that was just... I bought it on a lark. I was looking for something else. Yeah. I saw it in a Craigslist ad. I was like, well, that's, I've never seen one of those before. It's being full. Yeah, and yeah. in cool. the US, Triumphs aren't nearly as common as they are here, obviously. Mm -hmm. And a Speed 4, certainly, because I don't think it's that common. Even they're not common they're here. They're not common here. Yeah. No, they're not common here. So, and a great, but it, great bike. You know, yeah, and one. In you, the know motor. Was, you know who made the bike famous? Prince William. Huh. Yes, of course. Because yes. he, he passed his test, what, when he was about yeah. 19. Yeah. 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 And he went straight out and bought a Speed 4. My, I, I have the tangerine orange one. Yeah. Yeah. It is exactly the, the same one. shade as the Michigan the Department one. of Transportation. It's, like, <laughs> it's M. Dot Orange is what it is. I pulled right up beside an M. Dot truck, and he was like, he gave me the thumbs up because it was a Speed 4. Right, bro. <laughs> what? What <are> you <laughs> I never thought in a million years I'd, I'd own a sport bike and then I bought that one. Now, because I've had back surgery years and yeah. years ago, I can't ride comfortably long distances, but it's certainly fun to You know, it's all about that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. But, uh, but the other thing, when it's very recent... engaging. Speed is engaging, isn't it? And, it, and, it, it is. and I'm not done with it, certainly. No, for sure yeah. not. No. Well, when we rode to Yorkshire, it was oh, a five and a half hour ride. Fantastic. I've got my fat boy with all yeah. the luggage piled up behind yeah. me to lean on. I'm just sat in an armchair chilling back. Yeah. I think you're having a little bit of a harder time. On a <laughs> 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 it got there all right. It got there all right. I think you're right. It's not enough bungees, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we know someone who went to a Japan event with one bungee. <laughs> His gear was on the bike going, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> You can't go camping with one bike. Mind you, it was eight oh, feet long, wasn't it? Apparently you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even bothered, was he? Which about you, Cotty? You know yeah, you. you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> Mr. One Budgie, we'll have to call him. <laughs> Cotty. Yeah, yeah, one Budgie. <laughs> right. Um, right. Who's next? 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 Is, uh, buddy from the Idiot Collective, East Coast. Yep. Rock on. Rock on. <laughs> <laughs> got the East Coast massive, innit? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we know Mike is taken to the British vernacular. I'd like to hear his best British I accent. I did at the beginning. <laughs> and he says he, you can't chicken out. So you have to do that. Well, so what should we, what should we make I, him say? I butchered aluminium and I butchered garage. Now yeah, it's garage. It's garage. It's got an e in there. Yeah. In it. Garage. It's there is garage, isn't it? It's garage. Garage. It might be easy to do a Welsh accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what, isn't it? At the bottom. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get punched now. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a see Tony. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tony's gonna punch. Sorry, mate. He's probably outside the door now. <laughs> yes. I it's think he's got, he's got to say, it's about time for a cup of tea. That's it. If you can say well, that, well, I say it's about time for a cover, right? <laughs> not the Still sitting with an American accent. That's that was. <laughs> you have to do it. You can't chicken out, apparently. I just said it, but I don't know how to make it sound more British. Do us a line. I'm not for, do, do us a line from Snatch. Uh, <laughs> which we have. Uh, that's easy. So this is a family show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we got it. Yeah, 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 careful where you go. A line that. from Lockstock. Let's have a look. Um, if you, uh, we're trying like this one. Dags. Here, try this one. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not. Do you like dags? Oh, from the like dags yeah. No, no. What about what about? If you don't get me them guns, you'll be counting the fingers you haven't got. <laughs> well, uh, that's not from lot. No, that's that's, that's from Lockstock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that's the big man. So if you don't I get me them do guns, one. so okay, if you don't get me them guns, you'll be counting them guns. Them guns. You don't get me them guns. Them guns. 
You be can your be fingers, the fingers you haven't got. There's no way. There's no way. She's like, you haven't got. I'm so excited. Like, I need a speech therapy on this. <laughs> oh, or just therapy. Therapy. Yes, I definitely. So just therapy. one more time. If you don't get me them guns, you'll be counting the fingers that you haven't got. But you just said it with an H. You said I couldn't say it with an H. Evan. I said Evan. 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 Evan.